Welcome to the Chicago Bears Podcast. A presentation of ESPN Chicago, Chicago's home for sports. Here's your host, Pat, the designer. Bear Down Bears fans, welcome into the Chicago Bears podcast. I am your host, Pat, the designer, back at it again. Joined on a Monday on location by Lance Briggs. As always, Lance, how's it going, man? It's good. It's good. Um, you know, usually I'm at my home computer, but uh, I'm on the go right now. So, uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's, please excuse the, the the noise that you may or may not be hearing, but uh, my my phone is doing the best it can. Hey, listen, you gotta you gotta be there for the kids, man. Me and Lance were talking about his son out at out at the hockey tournament out in Minnesota, so yeah, dominating a little bit, yeah, a little, little little game, a little dominant, a little. Uh, well, dominant. Listen, listen, uh, Arizona <laughs> hockey in in Minnesota, you you, you it's a, it's a learning experience, all right. These are some of the best kids. In the country, <laughs> as far as hockey. Hey, hey. Well, hopefully, right. It gets better. That's the goal. Uh, you, you got to start somewhere. But we got a lot to get into on this episode, man. Got to talk about Roshan Johnson and the hype he's been getting, and of course, Bears rookie minicamp as a whole. Then look at uh, Luke Getzey, and he's got his guys from the super, uh, from the Super Bowl, from the uh, Senior Bowl, and get your experiences on. You know what it's like working with some of the coaches in the senior bowl as a player and what that could mean moving forward. Of course, got to talk about, listen, the Bears are on the move. Are you in favor of them leaving or not? And then finally, uh, do the, do these leagues need to do more to protect players? We saw Jokic and Ashiba get into it yesterday, and uh, it, all of a sudden people are just looking at Ashiba like he's a saint and Jokic is the villain, and I don't think that that's the real case. All that and more on today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Appreciate you guys for showing love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Make sure you listen to Monday through Friday on the ESPN 1000 app. Let's get into the first quarter. First quarter. Lance, here is a question that I think may surprise a lot of people just out of a rookie minicamp, right? We're seeing Roshan Johnson being talked about not as a player, but as a leader on this team. We're hearing the name come out. Was there somebody who you viewed the day you met them that you viewed in that sense, right? As a, as a this guy's going to be the leader or a leader of this team. Uh, I mean, when I got when I arrived here with the Bears, they there was a, there was a number of them, you know, uh, Mike Brown, uh, you know, Erlacher, uh, Ted Washington, Keith Trailer, uh, Olin Krutz, you know, these all of these guys, um, uh, and and then uh, later on, Reuben Brown, yeah. you know, all of these guys were they were natural leaders. You know, and um, and so it wasn't it wasn't hard to know uh, the right people to follow. You know, great leaders know who to follow, and so um, um, I knew who to follow, and and I knew who was going to help me become a better leader. What what does it mean to to see that initially, right? Because because every time when I hear Getsy talk about him, when I heard uh, uh, um, Alan Williams talk about him, right? When I hear Coach Hightower talk about him. It's always just, hey, man, this guy is a – he's he's the first guy in. He's the hardest worker, last guy out, really kind of showing that he wants things a certain way. He's going to make things be the way that he wants them to be. Oh, by the way, he's a good running back as well. What does that mean when the leadership qualities stand out over the play of the player? Well, you know, it's uh, – you know, fortunately, in, the, in today's game, you know, um, it's, it's much harder to find – the the uh, a true leader of the lot uh, of that locker room, yeah. you know, and now we we get to this age where guys don't want to ruffle the feathers, don't want to ruffle feathers, you know, and there's too many of them, and and it's and it, there's also this transition in in the NFL where where you take start taking away uh, uh, defensive guys' ability to hit, you know, you highlight the the wide receiver, and you're saying, you know. The, 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 there's a motion toward the wide receiver being the one of the leaders of the locker room. Yeah. You know, uh, when I when I came up, it were it was the 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 interior guys, the linebackers, the 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 the, the, the hard nosed guys that were the the leaders of the locker room. You know, because they were willing to challenge anybody. 
you know, there wasn't anybody they weren't willing to fight, you know? And so there's a, there's a change in kind of a changing of the guard, you know, where you're not, you're seeing more of these leaders being the, 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 the guys that play on that Island, you know, I mean, and we're not talking quarterbacks. We're talking outside of quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's so interesting to me, right. That like we, we are, like you said, you're seeing, I feel like when I watched football growing up, you know, you heard about Olin Cruz, you heard about, you know, Tommy Harris, you heard about th those guys that were th the guys who were around the football most often being the leaders. And now, right, you do hear about the receivers being the guys setting the tone in the room outside of the quarterback position. I think the interesting thing with the Bears was, right, the biggest people, the biggest part that people were scared about with Monty leaving wasn't the fact that Monty was a good running back. It was the fact that he was one of the leaders in our locker room. And I like the fact that Ryan Poles is kind of like, I think as you, as we navigate through rookie minicamp and head into right OTAs and different things like that, you're going to see that a lot of these young guys are kind of like more of a personality fit, even more so than maybe a skill set fit on top of everything. I like that because like you guys have talked about with your teams, you guys were all really good personality fits. You guys really rocked with each other. Y'all were, y'all were family. It wasn't just like we worked together. Right. Well, you know, the, the other thing, too, is is when you come in, there's, uh, of course, we, we're all, you know, there's there's going to be a level of light toward each other. We're all bears, yeah. you know, but uh, more importantly to that, I, I, you know, I'm coming out here. I'm going to bust my I'm going to bust my tail out here on this, on this football field. You know, I want to I want to prove to each guy to my right, to my left that I deserve to be here. I deserve to be respected and I deserve to earn a, earn a starting spot on this this team. I'm somebody that you can count on, you know, so there's, there's a learning aspect to this where guys need to, they need to earn the the trust of everybody in that locker room. You know, you shouldn't be, you, you shouldn't just be handed the keys. You're not going to appreciate the call. You know, you got to go out there. You got to do the time. You got to put in the, the driving hours. You got to put in everything that has to go in. And then when the time comes and your number is called, uh, you got to be there. You got to make the play. You got to be a playmaker. So yeah. Uh, uh, it, I, I like the beginning, the beginnings of it, but it's a process. What do you think about a lot of teams in the NFL and, and sports in general, right? Who are just kind of trying to go with as much youth as possible and maybe only have a couple of veteran leaders, right? Dame Lillard talked about this in an NBA sense where he said, I had dudes on my team when I got to the NBA that were 40. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, he was like, now everywhere I look, you got 20 year olds. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, they're cheaper, you know, the younger they guys are cheaper. are cheaper, you know, but you're, you're, you're trading in, um, I guess you're, you're trading in, uh, uh, um, somebody that you can trust, Yeah. you know, you can trust him to do what he's going to do on the field for someone cheaper and to more high risk, you know, and, and, and to, you to fall back a little bit on what we were just talking about, you know, one of the hardest things to do is, get attached to somebody, a young guy, and that young guy not pan out. Yeah. You know, like, so how attached are you going to get to this group? We just got this group in, and great personalities. Love you, love you, man. But when push comes to shove, you don't make the plays. You know, you're not, you're not being productive. And so, you know, listen, I'm over here taking out this pulling guard, and you're not, you're not, making, the, you're not hitting the, making this tackle. You know, that's going to get you cuffed out. Yeah. You know, and that's where leadership also comes into play. So, but if you're an, uh, um, a, a GM and, and you say, all right, I have a guy that he's, he's, he's averaging his, over his career, he averages at least 10 to 10 to 12 tackles a game, yeah. you know, um, but it's costing too much. I'm going to bring in this young guy, you know, he, he was a terror at the NCAA and you move that old guy out and bring the new guy in and he's injured all the time. He's got off the field issues, you know, and he's inconsistent on the field. Yeah. You know, you didn't know that. You didn't know that, you know, and you, you rolled the dice and you lost. You crapped out on that one. So there's, you, you know, there's, there's risk and reward. What are you going to do? Is there, is there enough, is there enough of a leadership role still in the NFL? Like there was when you guys were there, right? Where you have those guys who aren't right. Like we're talking about on the bears right now. Tremaine Edmonds is going to be one of our leaders this year. He's 27. Uh, Justin Fields is one of our leaders. He's 24. Do you feel like there's been kind of a over, over uh, uh, commitment to, 
I want to go with the young guy, roll the dice, like you said, gamble on that, versus I want to have the guy that's maybe not the best player anymore. He's not the guy he was when he was 25, but he's the best leader on this team. Well, it, here's, the, here's the thing on that. Um, because at one point, I was a part of the youngest team in the NFL. Yeah. You know, um, and when you're going in that direction, uh, you know, you're going to be led by the young guys. We're building the future. You know, it's not a, it's not one of those, you know, well, we have the older guys mixed in with the younger guys, and I want to keep that leadership. You know, the leadership was is, is being built by the younger, by this young foundation. So as this young foundation gets older, you're going to trickle pieces in and out, but you have a foundation, you know, and as long as they're able to produce and win, there will be pieces of this foundation that continues to grow that will be able to lead the young guys and transition from the old to the young. How much is it on the players versus the coaching staff? Because we always hear about, right, the players, police in the locker room, the players, right? Like, like listen, every every bear that's come in here on this podcast just said, yeah, Olin Cruz, you wasn't doing that. Like, if, if, if something was a problem, Olin was taking care of it. Um, but how much of that was also Lovey taking care of? How much of it should we put on the coaching staff to be building – the 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 leadership in this locker room. Uh, well, what, if if you get if you get guys in the locker room that buy into the culture, all right, to buy into what your your head coach is doing, then um, and and again, I mean, do you like your head coach? Do you like the situation? Is yeah. is is he provide a, a an environment that 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 makes you want to run through a brick wall for him? You know, and if that's the case, you know, that's that's a, that's an environment that, that Lovey provided for us, you know. And, and so, to me, him getting fired even after the 10 and 6, that was, you know, I, that falls on our shoulders, yeah. you know, be, because uh, he should have been 11 and 4. You know what I mean? Like the, the, or 11 and 5, he should have been 11 and 5. We should have been 12 and 4, you know, and he wouldn't have gotten fired, you know, and that falls on us. So, um uh, you know the, the the yes the coach is coach and the, and the players play, but if you have a coach that that you you love playing for, then it's up to you to keep him there or not. Yeah. Did that did that ten and six season stick with y'all for a long time? I think it stuck stuck with a lot of Bear fans. I think you know it's well. I mean, listen, the fans listen. Every season sticks with us. We was three and uh, three and whatever it is now. Seventeen games. Do the math on that. You know, uh, it's three and fifteen last year. It wasn't pretty. Yeah, you know I mean, or three and fourteen. It wasn't pretty. Every season sticks with us. But like as a player, right? Like Lovey was y'all guy. Lovey was the guy that brought a lot of the Bears in. Did that stick with y'all right past that season? That man, we he should still be a Bear. Oh, all right. <laughs> Lovey leaves, and then guess who enters? Okay, we get Mark Tressman. Yeah. I get Mark Tressman for two years. Yeah. You know, and and it, it just completely changed not only the culture, but it changed the, the motivation for me. It yeah. changed the motivation, you know, and, and I, I, every, every day I come out, I, 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 when I played, I'd come out, I, lo- I just loved coming out to practice. I loved every moment of it. Yeah. You know, and um, when Lovey left and Mark came, you know, there were days where I uh, I kind of dreaded coming to, to work, where it wasn't as, you know, I didn't feel as, it wasn't as fun as it was the day, before, as, as it has been in the past. Yeah. You know, and some of that stuff didn't change until I walked through that door and I saw some of my teammates and then it all changed again. You know what I mean? And, and then I realized why I love this, this game so much. Yeah. No, man, that's 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 the insight you're not gonna get nowhere else, man. Like, listen, the, the player insight you you can go you can go to ESP and all of that, but you're not gonna get that bear down insight right here. That's what you get here on this podcast. There, one more thing before we get out of the first quarter, Lance. Uh, we already know people are going to be talking about rookie minicamp for basically uh, the next month and a half. <laughs> like, like it's 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 gonna be the biggest story around, right? How much realistically can we take away from rookie minicamp? How much are we looking at really rookie minicamp is saying, I can see what this player is going to be versus you have no idea? I mean, you don't, you don't really have any idea. You don't. You don't. You, you have as much idea from rookie, rookie minicamp as you do from the draft. Yeah. You know, we have our, we know what the potential is. You know, um, I, I don't, it's, I, I, 
I, to me, it's rare to see someone in Ricky Minicam and the team go out and they say, he looked really bad. You know, we just drafted this guy and he came out to Ricky Camp and he looked really bad. That's that's foolish on the organization. And that anybody would be a lie. Would be foolish. Right. <laughs> this guy sucks. <laughs> we missed <laughs> It's been a week. <laughs> yeah. So so I think, you know, what what you will understand, what we what what the outside looking in will understand is when uh um when preseason when the preseason games start happening. You know, regardless of what anybody is saying about practice, this and that, you know, you'll be able to see them compete against an, op- an, a, an opponent and see how they how they fare. Hey, that's that's the hope. That's the that's the real thing. When when the real games start, when guys are able to slide in and out of there, right? And even right to me in in preseason, would you say that there's maybe too much of a focus on okay, this is what he kind of can do, but I feel like we we get hard line opinions on it instead of like thinking about the fact that this guy's at least got to get better a little bit. Well, it's a, it's a scrimmage, and it's it's you know the, the preseason is typically vanilla, so, you know it's it's vanilla, so it's it, it's can you as a defensive lineman can you create penetration? Yeah. You know you have a, a an outside rusher. Um, <clears throat> against uh, against what's that Darnell Wright? Uh, you know how does how well is he able to take on those rushers? Is he seeing uh, a three four rusher, an edge rusher? Is he getting a chance to see some of the rookies that were drafted? You know, um, in the first round against him. You know, what is what kind of work is he getting? You know, and and if we only get to see it for one quarter, two quarters, a quarter and a half, you know, that's what we want to see. We just want to see him get out there and get some exercises done, and and uh, because. He's our hopeful. You know, we have a bunch of players that are out there and we want to see be productive because they're they're the pieces that we're gonna to add to the puzzle for this uh this 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 season. Absolutely. That's the first quarter of Monday's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page if you haven't done so already. We got more insight coming from Lance Briggs as we get into the second quarter here. Second quarter. Because Lance, uh, I've been told that you're a Senior Bowl Hall of Famer out here. I am. I am dominating. actually dominating am. out here in the Senior Bowl. Well, I, it's it's interesting because all the work I did was in the first half. I got I ended up um, rolling, getting my my ankle rolled. Uh, I think maybe third quarter. Yeah, and 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 was done for the rest of the day. But uh, but it was an intense week. You know, it was an intense week. Um, the thing about the the senior bowl was the conversations that I had with my my agent. You know, and my agent at the time, uh, Ryan Tolner, he said, "Listen, it's like this isn't practice. Like, don't treat anything like practice. Yeah. It's like this is a preparation for the draft. Yeah. And so, don't like sprint to every drill." You know, bust your tail on 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 every rep. You know, and no matter what your coach is saying, hey, you know, take it easy on this one. It's like don't take it easy on anything. It's like because this is a proving ground, and you have all thirty two teams that are going to be there with their uh, chicken hawk with you guys and watching everything, all, all your, your every movement. It's it's. Let me ask you this, right? Because of course we see the Senior Bowl. We see right, like like you said, it's a preparation for the draft. But is it is it a measuring stick? for you, the player, as well, right? Because we know Luke Getze went out and he he found a lot of his guys in that senior bowl, so he liked what he saw from those guys. But as a player, right, is it like, oh, I can play at this level? I can't – or you already feel like you you have that already? No, you no, it's definitely a measuring stick because <clears throat> even going into that – even going into that, that week, you know, or before, before the week because you're all preparing for the draft and – combines and all that stuff so you're working out with certain guys but you're looking reading the, the media and the media is talking about who the top linebackers are and senior bowl you know uh, i know that these linebackers are going to be there i'm playing with some and playing against some so you know i i want to see you know i want to see how you move i want to see you know why you're one of the top linebackers and and i'm gonna go out there i want to i want i want to show you why i'm one of the top linebackers and 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 of course, by the end of the, that week, um, I'm I'll have an, a, a good evaluation on who I think are the top dogs. When you uh, what was the play in there? 
where you were like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be all right in the NFL. What was that? What was that moment in the Senior Bowl where you were like, hey, I think, I think I'm gonna be pretty good out here. Somebody gonna get a gym. You know, it, the, from from movement wise, I think I, I just remember um, the one on ones. You know, I was really looking forward to one on ones because when I was training, uh, when I was training in in Tempe. I ran a lot of one-on-ones with Jason Witten, you know, and it was one of those deals where, you know, Witten coming from Tennessee and, and me coming from Arizona, <clears throat> he didn't know anything about me. You know, I, I knew little about him, yeah. but uh, we ran one-on-ones. Um, we ran one-on-ones on one day and, and it was, it was, a, it was physical, you know, it was physical. And after that play, I don't. I don't believe he he got the 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 reception. But after that play, he's like Briggs. Let's me and you. Like when I line up, I want you to line up with me. You know, it was one of those deals. Like like I'm, I'm gonna get work from you. You know, as opposed to the other guys. You know, and so I was like, absolutely, let's do this. So you know, it was uh, so practicing practicing against him and trying to look for who the best guys I could cover or whatever it was was um, I think um, uh, definitely helped my helped me. Uh, getting, getting looked at from from the uh, the NFL NFL guys. So you went into that almost as a iron sharpening iron type of situation. You know what I mean? Like I'm I I, I feel like I'm here, but if I can do this against y'all, I know I can be here now. Yeah, yeah. I, it's I mean you you you're absolutely right. right. Like iron does sharpen iron, and I need to find out who the best are. I need to look at who I think the best are, and that's who I need to put myself in front of. Um, <clears throat> You know, and, and and sometimes you know the 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 conclusion is already made. So there are players at the Senior Bowl that that the, the NFL already established these are the best. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what you do. As a matter of fact, you need to say that you're hurt today or this week, and you can't make it. Just come out to interviews and stuff like that because you're already the best. You know, and 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 I, I definitely wasn't one of those guys. <laughs> how much of that? How much of that do you see going on in the draft process? Where it's like, hey, bro, don't do that. Don't do that. You just you 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 you're not gonna do nothing but hurt hurt yourself stock wise. Well, they they that that happens that happens yearly. That happens at the combine. They tell you yeah. so some guy who say, don't do this, don't do that. You know, but uh, um, I mean, um, uh. At the end of the day, if you're if you're not doing any of this stuff, yeah, maybe it's because you know what your times are. Because we all know what our times are. We all know, like I knew that bench wise, I was gonna get somewhere between. I thought I might be able to get thirty, but it's gonna be somewhere between twenty three and probably twenty eight. You know, and I ended up in twenty five. You know, I knew what my forty time was gonna be. I knew what my times were gonna be. I'm like, well, why am I gonna wait till the pro day to put out times that I know? I'm going to already get, I, I know what it's going to be. It's going to be what's going to be, you know, so I might as well get it over with. No facts. It, it's, it's so, let, let, let me ask you this, right? Because I, I like the fact that Luke Getzey went into the senior bowl, ends up getting, I believe three of the guys in the draft. He actually was able to coach in the senior bowl. How much does it mean to actually have that work in that system and then be able to continue that work with that same coach? Uh, it's, it's certainly helpful. Um, you you, you kind of have a, a, a step ahead because you got to spend, you got to spend a week with the coach learning a system. And then he drafts you and say, Hey, you remember that system we were working on? <laughs> well, let's get back to it. Yeah. You know, rather than add, uh, this is our system. I want to introduce it to you. You know, you're not being reintroduced right. to uh, 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 a new system. You're you're just continuing on what you already have started. Do you think that's going to give them a little bit of a jump coming into the NFL, or is it going to be that same kind of like rookie timeline of development? But the fact that they already had it, right? They've had this playbook for probably now what two two months, basically, if you really outside of the week, I'm not sure if they were studying it the entire time, but does it give them a little bit of a boost? You have OTAs. Yeah. You'll get all that stuff in OTA. So it's not, no, no, there's not a boost. There's right. none of that stuff. You know what I mean? It's, it's you, your OTAs, you'll get your stuff down in OTAs and then move right, move that right into uh training camp. You know, this, this year for rookies, 
it will be the longest year of their NFL career. You know, they'll, they, there's going to be meetings at once, once all the older guys, the veterans get to leave, they'll have to go to Ricky involved stuff. Right. You know, there'll be a, a extended stuff, player development stuff and character and, and just human development stuff that you have to be a part of. So, uh, um, it's, it's going to be tiresome. It's going to be tiresome, but they have a lot, they got a lot of work to do. They have a lot of work to do. Is there, is there just way more classroom stuff rookie year? Yeah. You, uh, and shoot. Uh, it's that, they, I remember they had to go through that play development. Uh, I hated it. Yeah. You know, it's long. We're up there early in the morning and then I'm watching, you know, the, the, uh, Lovey breaks the team. And right before he breaks the team, uh, rookies, we'll see you guys uh, right afterwards for the next hour. You know, so it's an additional hour we have to put in, you know, and and covering, you know, covering everything, you know, how to interview, you know, how to handle the field, how to handle these. And I'm sure they're doing it even more now, yeah. you know, because we know so much more. Um, uh, social media and, and everything, you know, so. Um, uh, but it's, it's necessary. And again, like I said, you you only have to do it one year. Yeah. After that, you know, and it, 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 to me, it's kind of just, just kind of prepping you for, for the transition. Like you don't have to go to school. You don't have to go to class anymore. Yeah. You don't have to go to class. Like this is life. This is your career. And this is how you're going to feed your families. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's, it's always funny when you see that rookie transition. That's why I think I, I give credit to all the guys who came out of the, um, the, the, the COVID season who were able to make that transition because I'm like, dog, there's probably so much stuff that they just didn't get so much stuff that normally in a rookie year you would get. So I really, I really give those young guys a lot of credit. Um, it's, 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 as we keep this thing moving, we got to talk about soldier field, but before we do that, we're here at halftime, Lance, Lance, what's going on with you? How are you? What do you have going on in your life? Let's tell the people. Listen, listen. listen. At halftime is when we make our most uh, our adjustments. Okay, do- we got to figure out. We got to find out how they're attacking us. Okay, they they, they come scripted. Their first fifteen plays are scripted. They're going to find out. They're going to find out what they can and cannot do. If we're able to shut down those first fifteen plays, we will send that offensive coordinator into disarray. He's going to go back to what he knows the best and what he knows the best. We've already, we already prepared for it. We're going to make, that makes life very hard for him. And if we can go, if we go into halftime up a touchdown or two, that plays into our hands. So with that being said, uh, this is right now, it's, it's a very busy time. Uh, I was, I was up this morning talking to uh, uh, the freshman coaching staff at uh, Basha High School. Um, uh, in in Chandler, Arizona, and we're going over uh, uh, defense install for this week and things that we want to put in, uh, and and how I wanted our Mike, our Mike, Sam, and Will to align, um, and how I wanted our safety, how our safeties uh, uh, to align also, you know, um, and and so it's uh, it was I had a few questions and I answered them crisply, crisp. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, but it's you know it's it's you know and it's it's fun you know it's fun to be a part of it and, and I love the eyes that you get from uh, these young men um, <clears throat> that uh, that just want to learn you know they just want to learn and and after after every practice they you get the whole team to come up and and dap you up hey thanks coach hey thanks again for the day coach thanks coach they just want to come out and learn and get better so it's uh, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a good feeling. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so, uh, Coach Lance, are you uh, you trying to get back into the uh, coaching uh, scene at a little higher level, maybe one day, a little, uh, little uh, linebacker coach, a little uh, teaching the next generation? <laughs> Not a chance. Well, I mean, I, I don't mind. I don't mind uh, coaching, you know, uh, individually. Yeah. But, uh, but no, I, you know, this is this is an opportunity for for me to uh, to to coach my my kids you know i get to coach my kids for you know maybe a year maybe two and then i'll watch them do what they want to do you know and um it's uh it's it's great it's 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 time that i cherish and i 
and I remind my boys, you know, I, I remind Lance Jr., you know, who I'm sure gets gets tired of me. He plays the same position I did. And, and you know, I'm, from time to time, I'm trying to tell him, son, if you just listen to me, I'll get you to the ball. I'm going to help you get yourself to the ball, you know. And and uh, um, uh, it's it's hard because uh, he hears it from me all the time. Yeah. He hears it from me all the time, and I re- it, it, and it's hard because he's a linebacker and I'm a linebacker, and I know that better than everything else. Yeah. So you know, and 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 every time he has, he tries to resist or thinks that he's right. You know, I have to remind him. I have to remind him of what my resume looks like. You know. <laughs> so does it, the argument doesn't last long to, put it, to, 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 to be honest what what is what is he argued what is he argued with the most with you on what what is the the biggest argument that y'all have had from a linebacker perspective oh um worrying about worrying about a player that the quarterback's not looking at you know and my deal is, I, I tell him, I was like, don't, I was like, listen, don't overthink this sport. Yeah. All right. You need to keep this thing as simple as possible. Keep it as simple as possible. Play what you see. Yeah. All right. Play what you see. That's what I'm asking you to do. You play what you see. You can play as fast as you possibly can. You will get around the ball. Playing fast and playing what you see. And so um, that, it's, uh, you know, and I try to keep coaching it. To to you know simple stuff too you know simple phrases because simple phrases to me are, are the easiest to receive. Yeah. So I I, I you'll hear me repeat that all the time. You know <laughs> I'm not gonna be, it's not gonna be a long explanation. It's just hey son play what you see. What did you see? Yeah. <laughs> you know this is what I saw. Okay, well then play that. You know that's that's it. Wait, that's it. He wanted to cover my man's <laughs> over here at the QBA. Look yeah. At that. <laughs> So that's what. So he'll say, he'll say, but Dad, there's a running back over there. And I'm like, what did you see? What did the quarterback do? What did you see? He looked that way. We'll play that. There it is. <laughs> you heard it here first. Lance Briggs said, "Play what you see." As we head back into the second half. Get into the third quarter, Lance. The Chicago Bears are talking about moving to Arlington. That it's not even talking about now. We got papers filed. They're trying to break ground at Arlington. Um, I mean, you've been your whole career has been Soldier Field. Everything that's been the Bears has been Soldier Field. First off, are you pro Bears moving from Soldier Field to Arlington Heights? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, I think. Uh, that soldier, and it's, it's as legendary as the field is. Uh, it they had their opportunity. They had their opportunity to keep to keep the Bears, and um, and they squandered that opportunity. I think uh, so. In, in the, the, I think the the what what you what you what you can do with Arlington Heights. Uh, is also far too great to stay, yeah. and be and be run by Parks and Recreation. Yeah, you know, instead of owning your own and building around it, there's uh, just too much potential there. Uh, and they and I'm sure that the ownership and everybody everybody around the, the league understands that. Yeah, I I, I said uh, with Sylvie last week that I think they should buy the naming rights to the city and rename it Hallis Heights. I think that's a no-brainer right there. Like, <laughs> it's not bad. Is it? It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is in, in, in Illinois, that's, that's probably doable. You get the, the, the right governor mayor in that, in that area, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, like, listen, we, we got Wrigley. Wrigley is in Wrigleyville. Yeah, you know I mean, we, we can have Bear, whatever they're gonna call the new stadium in Hallis Heights. I think that that's a match made in heaven right there. Well, like I said, that's that's a brunch meeting <laughs> that says, you know, hey, we, you know, if we change the name, you know, what do we get in return? Uh, you, yeah. know, it's, you know, some handshakes that are going on and and some 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 because you know, right now they listen, this I see the the tops. 
They, they, the tax went up. Did you guys talk about that? Did you guys talk about the tax? No, we 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 ain't talked about the tax. The tax going up on the uh over there. How how how's that going to affect things too? That is a good point. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, they can still listen. They're still going to make enough money to handle that, you know. But and there's some, there's some movement that's going to have yeah, to happen. Not but, uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely are crazy. But that tax going on, and the the the, the state knows what's going on too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such an interesting situation with them moving because it's like, how do you, how do you how do you have land that you could have given to the Chicago Bears and not do it, and then you're upset that they just want to leave Soldier Field when Soldier Field, well, listen, Soldier Field is iconic. It's it's an amazing place. It it is it is a major part of the city, but realistically. For the charter franchise, we should want the best, and it, it just—it never felt like that to me. Yeah, I, I, I just remember a lot of, a lot of um, the, the, the issues, you know, dealing with Parks and Rec, and then uh, um, saying no to a lot of situations and. Yeah. And they have to explain, look, we have all these events that are happening. That's why the grass isn't where it needs to be. And and it's it just it's it's one of those the, the pain in the butt, you know, yeah. situations where <clears throat> you know it, it, what could have been what what could you have done to create created a, a better environment for the players? What even even that, right? Even you even you talking about the field conditions and stuff like that. What was that like? Where you're like, hey, why the heck is Paramore playing here on Saturday and we got the Packers next week? You know what I mean? Like, what was that like just knowing that the field was not gonna be up to the standard that you needed it to be to play on at the highest level? Man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't care. I really didn't care. I no. I, I you probably Whoever we play against has to play on the same surface that we play on. Yeah. You know, uh, we're going to play some football. You know, I'm going to say it's mud. We're going to slide in the mud. You know, if it's you know, actually, you know, the one time it was it, it was a little bit different was when the uh, when it was frozen. It was like a Monday night yeah. against the Packers in 08, and it was frozen. Yeah. And that was maybe the only time where I was like, you know, I was like, all right. Falling is going to hurt today. Yeah, you know, what I mean? like if I could, if I can grab this guy and push him out of bounds and stay up, I'm going to try to do that. You know, and that, you know that was one of the only times. But outside of that, uh, you know, football, football. Yeah, was there was there any different prep going in? Was it like just any different uh, anything you did different heading into the game or preparing your body for the conditions that you expected the field to be in? No, you know what? Uh, Tony Mettingham was always the guy that was going to come on and he was going to give us uh, tips and reminders on the surface and say, hey, listen, these are the kind of cleats you need to wear today. This is what you need. Or uh, uh, just be prepared for this. This kind of, it's a, it's a slick surface. Um, and, and that's, I, I'm, I mean, even with t- T Med saying that kind of stuff, you know, I'm, to me, it was. I just want to make sure that I'm on top of that. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know yeah. what I'm supposed to do. You know, uh, it's a game of angles uh, and a game of inches. And so um, if I know where I need to be and it's a slippery surface, get there faster and be and be uh, and, and have those knees bitten ready. You know, <clears throat> so it's just understanding football, understanding the surfaces. What what was what was that time where the field got you where you was like oh I'm about to lay this mug out and then all of a sudden the grass was just gone underneath your feet. Well, it's, you know more so than the grass, it was um, it was another player. You know there were yeah. uh, 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 hundreds of times where I think I have the right angle and I'm I'm going to blow this guy up. Yeah. And I'm like, why is my body moving right past him? <laughs> like, what is going on? And, and I realized, you know, I was I was lightly getting blocked. Like somebody yeah. just pushed me just enough yeah. to make me fly by this tackle. Uh, and that that happens all the time. Of course, you just you slide on that grass. You dig that grass that that uh, you're sitting there, and you slide on there and just miss tackles. But uh, um, uh, you know, the, the the guys on the other side they get paid too. You know, they get paid too. And those guys are some. They're, they're all talents. 
So, uh, you know, sometimes even getting a hand on a guy, you know it's not enough. This guy, this is not, guy's not going to fall because he feels my hand uh, on his knee. You know, so yeah. um, these things all happen. The only thing you can hope is that the other 10 guys on defense are uh, flying to this ball and maybe we'll make up for my mistake. What was that? I don't know if I've asked you this on the pod, and the pod is the best place to ask it. What was your, uh, oh, I'm here moment? In the NFL, what was your like? Oh, this is this a little different up here, where where you was either going head up with somebody and they they got you back, or or you 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 were about to make a tackle and all of a sudden the tackle wasn't there. What was that first moment where you was like, oh, this is the league? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Oh, uh, shoot. We played. We played. We played. Um. San Diego in my rookie year against Rodanian Tomlinson. And just watching him on film, I, you know, what I was nervous the most about was, was if he catches the spring, he caught a lot of springs, yeah. he catches the spring, if I get a good angle on him, he's going to shake me. Yeah. You know, but my thing was, listen, whether he shakes me or not, I'm just going to run as hard as I can. And if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. You know, um, we had a, there was a third and one. And just based off of what they run a lot, you know, in study and tape, I had a good feeling where he was going to go. And on that third and one, you know, I was able to get my nose in there. He ran as hard as he could. I ran him, bam, nosed him up and, and, uh, and, and, and stopped his, uh, his progress. And we got off the field. You know, so that was a really good feeling. But you know, in, the, in that, in that, against that, that, that screen, you know, he shook me. He shook me. You know, we had, he shook me. But we had other guys that were coming in, so we didn't fall. Yeah. We didn't fall, which was good. So to me, it was a play that was that I helped make. Yeah, you know, it was a play I helped make. I didn't make the tackle, but I helped make the play. Hey, that's that's what it's all about, man. I got shook, but we got. It. <laughs> that's true. It's a, but you know, it's all about sacrifices. Man. And I have no problem. And I have no problem looking bad. I have no yeah. problem sacrificing looking bad so that my teammates can come in and make plays. That's the right mentality to have. I love that. I love that, man. Uh, listen, we talked about kind of some things you did to prepare on the field and kind of protect yourself. Now's the topic I want to get into as we head into the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. About protecting players. Um. You watched the playoff games last night. You're very invested in the NBA, even though the Kings, you know, went down hard, hard fought series. But um, last night we saw a little situation between Jokic and the owner of the Phoenix Suns. Uh, They get into a little bit of a mix up. Jokic comes out after and says the NBA talks about doing more to protect the players. We've seen similar situations like this in the NFL where guys are just talking crazy to players. Players go up, uh, not not to the point where you're in the stands, right? But but where you're like, hey, listen, come down here and say that. Do these leagues need to do a better job protecting the players? Now, that's a very different situation where the owner is the one that you need to be protecting from. And he kind of walked. He, he said Jokic shouldn't be suspended all of this. He's a good guy. I'm a fan of his, of his game, blah, blah, blah. But should they be doing more to where – the fans and the players aren't having these issues. Well, I'm, I'm always I'm always going to say yes to this question. Um, you know, the NFL is little is different than the NBA because there's more space between there's still more space between the, the fans and the players. Yeah. You know, um, the the you know the, the things are going to be said or whatever. I know you, you know what we say about sensitive is players. You know, you know, but, um, there there is a line. You know, there's a line that should be crossed there, um, and that that should be addressed. But in the NBA, the the players are right there next to, like you're mingling with the uh, the, the fans. If the fans and the players are right there, so for them, it's very different. I think yeah. it's very very different. You know, you you can have you can have security along the lawn and the walls uh, at NFL stadiums. You know that that can that can separate the 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 players from the fans and you get anybody unruly or, or getting out of hand or out of control, rocking that boat, you know, it's, it, it's, it's simpler to point them out, you know. But NBA, uh, um, you know, I feel for those guys, man, because you have 
you have a player's bench and right next to the bench you'll have fans. Yeah. You know, you have fans and, and if those fans get out of line or whatever it is, you know, you you, you got you got a loose ball, you're gonna throw a loose ball and you know, somebody you know, uh, uh, catch you inappropriately. Yeah. You know, what I mean? what are we gonna say? Oh uh, man, don't do that. You know, what do we you know, on on you know, it's just one of those things, man. I was just it's different. It's just it's it's different. But I'm always gonna say yes to should there be more done when it comes to uh, uh, fans and player interaction. Absolutely. How does the NFL do with that? Is the NFL pretty good kind of at the player fan? Because I know you, you, you're going to hear crazy stuff. Listen, we've heard about all the cities around the NFL that just yell out the wildest things in the world, whether it be towards the team or actually, you know, going too far with racial slurs, different things like that. But, like, does the NFL for the most part do a pretty good job of, like, y'all not – we're not letting that fly? Yeah. Uh, well, I tuned that so I, I've always tuned it out for the most part. You know, yep. and I mean, the one thing that that would bother me, I mean, if I if I'm hearing if I'm hearing racial slurs, like I'm, I'm that's something I'm pointing out right now. I want I want the, whoever that is out of the game right yep. now. You know, um, because you cross the line and, and trying to get under my skin. Yes. You know, and and so, um, um, it, 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 to me. Uh, I know. I hey, listen. I get that you're you're emotional. I get you're emotional. I get that you, you, you want your team to win, and probably bothered that they're not winning at this point. You know, but uh, but the, but but the day, man. Like at the end of the day, listen. I don't know who your family is and all that, but I know you have to go home to one. You know, yeah. or hopefully, uh, I hope that you you do get to go home to one. Yeah. And I know, I hope you know that I got to, I have to go home to my family. Yeah, you know, so I, I look at it from that perspective. You know, we're 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 dads, husbands, boyfriends, yeah. uh, brothers, sons, um, somebody. You know, and and, and so uh, I, I like to keep that at least that respect. Yeah, I I, uh, I think more so recently I've seen. It was, I can't think of his name. I know it was a, a player in San Francisco ended up going into the stands and basically told buddy like, "I'm right here. Say that to me." And I just, it's not, I don't know if I'm as far as Charles Barkley, right? Charles Barkley says every player should be allowed to pick one fan out the stands and and beat the mess out of them in the middle of the field. I don't know if I'm that far, right? I don't know if I'm that far. But what I will say is that, right, like, I feel like a a night in jail or whatever it is, like, there needs to be, to me, more of a repercussion to actually tell these guys, hey, listen. If this happens, you'll never be back here again. If this happens, you you'll be right. Like we, we, it's not the 1950s no more. It's not like my man's is coming up in a hoodie, buying a ticket from a scalper on the sideline and sneaking in. Like we should have a little bit better way to to police this in these leagues. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know about um, spending nights in jail or anything like that, man. I don't wish that on anybody. Yeah. Uh, but you know, listen, you know, give a picture of the ID, you know, a picture of his ID or whatever it is and ban him for a period of time or whatever. You know, listen, we can't have we don't want we don't want fans acting in that in that behavior with that kind of behavior with yeah. these days. You know, and you can't handle yourself appropriately, then you shouldn't be here. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And and I think that's the main thing. I always see I know I said I got to sit uh courtside this year. And they just, they leave you that little card. Hey, listen, these players can hear you, and if uh, if you say something outlandish, <laughs> you won't be back. I know at least at the Bulls game, I saw that because we sat maybe second or third row behind them, and I mean like they legit can hear you. I was like, hey, P will play up, and he was like, <laughs> he like gave me like to shut up. You don't know nothing about basketball. I'm like, oh, all right, my bad, dog. I see you. So um, that's 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 a big difference yeah. for NBA. You know, versus some of these other sports. I mean, shoot, I think, you know, even baseball has this, this, there's some, there's some separation. Yeah. You know, I mean, those, I know the fans are right there on the dugout, but there's some separation from those sports. Like, yeah, it's, you're, you're right there. Yeah. You're right there. And you're on it, on the, on the players. You're mingling in and out with the players, and they can hear everything that you have to say. Yeah. How much, how much can you actually hear NFL? Like, I know you said you tune out a lot, but is it just like white noise or can you actually hear individuals? Well, you can hear individuals. Yeah. You can hear individuals, um, you know, and they're always, you know, when you're younger, it's funny because they're younger, they don't really know, they don't know your name, so they're, 
you know, and if they can't see your name tag, it's just it's like, oh, 55. Oh, 55. You know, and then you turn around and you're like, your mama. Oh, a <laughs> I can't believe I got caught in that one, you know, but you, when, you, when you played the league for a while, they're like, Briggs, and it just goes to your name, and yeah. then they want to, you know, it's like, you know, when, they're, when, when you're away and you have, like, I remember playing in New York and those, those fans were a lot closer uh, and, and someone would yell out my name. Like, I'm, there's no reason for me to address to, to, to acknowledge this, this fan because I know this fan is just trying to get in my hands and something that he wants to say to, to bother me. Yeah. You know, let me stay focused on what's important. That's this game and that's what we got going on next. Hey, that's that's how it's supposed to be done, man. You you never you never had a fan that got you, did you? You ain't never have one that got in your head a little bit, did you? Uh, I'm sure there was. I, I don't. I I can't I certainly can't recall, I, I can't so it wasn't that big a deal. You right. know, um, and, you know, there, there was probably something happened that that affected me when I was young, like the first year or two. Yeah. The first two years after that, you know, I'm yeah, I'm used to it. Like it's, I know what you're trying to do. Not gonna bother me. Let's let's keep it moving. You just hear it already. I love it. I love it. Hey, let's head into the two minute warning, Lance. This is the time in the show where you can ask Lance Briggs questions. Hear your name on the uh, on the podcast, and uh, we actually got some good ones here, Lance. This is a uh, shout out to uh, Er Schultz. I think that's his name. Er Schultz at Er Schultz says, uh, "Not sure if you guys have done this." Uh, in a breakdown of the scheme, but can you ask Lance to ask the difference between the or tell the difference between the Mike, Will, and Sam? There is no difference. They're all interchangeable. Ooh, that is. Uh, there are times where the Sam is going to be the Mike. Uh, the Mike will be the Sam. There are times where the Mike will be the Will. The Will will be the Mike, and. And, and so be it. So it's important to be able to know all those positions. So if you're in a, if you're in an under front, then uh, with with uh, two backs in there, then your your will is going to be the mic. Um, if you're in a, 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 a trips formation, then your Sam will be the mic. You know, it's it, it just really depends on you know, and, and that's how some teams will attack you. They'll try to motion you out and get you in certain situations or certain formations and. And, uh, and try to get you uh, get your Mike or your, your Sam or somebody out into a, a situation where they're covering, you know, like a, 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 a Reggie Bush. Yeah. And, you know, he scores in the championship game and doesn't dance type of deal. You know, it's, it's – uh, but they're interchangeable. So you got to have versatile uh, linebackers. Uh, that was a very specific example there, Lance. That was a very specific example. <laughs> There's a lot of good running backs out there, but I knew one that, that all Chicagoans would would, uh, would 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 remember. We we can never forget uh, uh, Reggie Bush. We never will. Uh, question from Dwayne Lockett, sixty five fourteen says, Lance, do you think that our straight line pressure up the middle will be good enough if we don't add any ends? Hey, um, well, getting pressure, in, getting interior pressure, um, um, adding billings, getting interior push will will certainly help. You know, players like Gibson on the edge. Um, we'll see what uh, what the young guys can do, but um, all that interior push can can only help with your edges because if your quarterback can't step up. Um, the guys on the outside can 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 uh, uh, rush that edge. And get to uh, get to the block point and stay up that up to that block point and turn the corner. Hopefully that quarterback can't step up, and for them, uh, they should just be able to tee off and, and take that ball away. Sack fumbles. This one is from uh, Bear Defense. Shout out to Todd Kunis says since we've already seen our linebackers in the past, how do you rank our new linebacking crew? I'm guessing among the other linebackers. Let's just do the NFC North. Where do you rank the Bears linebacker crew among the NFC North to narrow it down? Uh, I'm not. Tell them, can I watch them play first? Can I see <laughs> how they play in the Bears? You know what I mean? Like, hey, yes. Well, I don't wanna, listen, I don't want to give you any false hope because yeah. uh, on paper, we look good. I watched, uh, I watched a, a, a Mike Zimmer coach, uh, Vikings defense, that on paper 
should have been one of the top 10 all-time defenses. Yeah. But when they got on the field, they didn't play like that. Yeah. You know, so let me, let, let us, let us see what they're going to do. You know, uh, you, you prepare for the worst, but, but hope for the best. And I'm hoping for the best. I see what these guys, some of these guys have done uh, before getting here. Uh, and it, it, it should transition well, but it doesn't mean it's going to. Yeah. Dude, let me let me ask you this. Do you at least like the style of linebackers that we have on the team for this defense? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, and more yes. <laughs> yes, 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 and more yes. And more yes. You're, 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 you're a big Jack Sandler guy. I'm the Sanborn guy. I'm a T.J. Edwards guy. Yeah. And I love that they went and got Tremaine Edmonds um, um, to play the mic in this defense. And it, it's it's going to pay dividends. It's going to pay huge dividends for us. Hey, I love it. I think that the, I think that this linebacker crew is going to fly. I'm hoping that we can get some pressure in front of them. Uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Monday edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. Make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Great questions. Keep those coming all week so we can run it back with Lance here during the two minute warning. Lance, did we win the game in this one? Did we come away with a dub in this one? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, you know, listen, listen, you carried. You carried a lot of weight this today. You carried a lot of weight. I'm proud of you. And the city should just, listen, you put the city on your back and you got you carried us to a win today. Congrats. I got I gotta got get a jersey. I gotta get a jersey. I gotta get a jersey. <laughs> Do I wear the C next week? Can I get the C on the chair? I'm not there yet. Listen, listen, we can't have flashes in the pan. Anybody can come out and have a good game. We need you to stack up those, stack up some consistency, and then yeah. we're going to get you that team, all right? All right, I love it, Coach. I'm going to be right there with you, man. Coach Briggs on the podcast on a Monday, as always. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the page, and make sure that you're tuning in every single Monday through Friday because we're going to have more Bears content coming to you throughout the season, throughout the offseason, throughout training camp, OTAs, all of that. As always, it's your boy, Pat the Designer. Back at it again. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down. Peace.